In this video, we're going to be doing some civil FE exam review. And if you are taking this, this exam or you are planning to retake this exam, these concepts that I'm going to be going over today are going to be very helpful in allowing you to pass this exam. And so let's get straight into the content. I have uh, two practice problems for you all. So I want to dive right into it. All right. So I'm going to minimize myself and whenever you are studying for the FE exam, it's very important that you study the right material. So I'm just showing you uh, what you should be studying. And today we're going to be going through ethics and professional practice, and I'm going to be combining the two things. So where I'm getting this information from is from the FE manual. It's going to be uh, the code of ethics and we're going to be talking about professional liability. Now you may be thinking, and eh, this is not going to be that many questions on the exam. And my goal for you is to um, not take any of this exam lightly. Like I want you to um, try to get every single question right and master every single concept. So on this channel, I literally go over each concept and I break it down step by step so that when you get on the test, it's super easy. So if this is something that you want to do. You want to study um, and have practice practice problems for every single concept that will be tested for the civil FE. Then make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right. So we are two minutes in and I want to get started. So I'm going to scroll up to our first question and this is for uh, kind of the professional liability and the code of ethics. We'll just say, and um, it says, complete the sentence. If you check the calculations for a licensed registered uh, friend who has begun a consulting engineering business, A, you do not need to be a licensed engineer. B, you should uh, be paid I'm sorry, your friend assumes all liability for your work. Uh, C, you should be paid for your work. And D, the friend's client should be informed of your involvement. So if we're just going through this, all right, when it comes to ethics, um, I'm just kind of looking at this. And every time I do a practice problem, I like to think, will I need the FE? manual for this and I don't believe so. I'm just going to use kind of logic. Um, so if I'm working with somebody, okay, so if you check calculations for a licensed registered friend uh, who has begun a consulting engineering uh, business, you do not need to be a licensed engineer. I wouldn't agree with that. Your friends assume all liability for your work. No, I mean, both of y'all are together, right? You're checking calculations for a licensed friend, all right? So now you're checking, you're involved. And then uh, what else? Uh, you should be paid for your work. I mean, <laughs> I would agree with that. And then the friend's uh, client should be informed of your, your involvement. Um, so I think the most important thing here is, is that... Um, not being paid. That's not going to be the most important thing. The friend, um, their client should be informed of your involvement. Cause if you're checking calculations, you're reviewing stuff. I mean, that's some liability that's going into that. And so you want to make sure that, um, you're taking the right steps and using the right ethics to make sure everyone's on the same page with what's going on. So this seems like simple stuff, but it's actually very helpful. Um, I have, I, as I've been working in the field, um, I'm going on three years out of college as a simple engineer and, um, you see issues come up and you see like little things here and there. So this stuff is actually very valuable information. All right. So I'm going to make myself even smaller so you guys can see this whole question all right all right so it says you are seeking 
uh, to secure a contract. And this is our second question. Be sure to like and subscribe and share this with other people if you're finding some value from this video. All right, so it says, you are seeking to secure a contract to design a new fuel facility and distribution system for the local gas company. Based on the model rules, which of the following should not, uh, can't read, which of the following would not allow you to proceed with the project? Okay, so again, I'm gonna ask myself, uh, do I need my FE manual for this question? Uh, it says based, what I'm reading is based on the model rules. What are the model rules? I have no clue. So I'm going to see if my FE manual will be, will be helpful within this. So you'll be able, you're going to have a PDF kind of format uh, for when, whenever you're taking the test. So you'll be able to search right within the PDF. And as you can see, I already let you know what I'm about to do, but I would just search model rules. All right looks like uh, six things come up and I'm going through the model rules and I'll zoom out. Okay. So this brings me the, to the code of ethics, right? See model rules, model rules. Okay. There's a whole model rule section, right? Okay. So this is why this is very important to, um, you know, understand what is in your FE handbook because now I'm going to go through, you know, what my options are and see if something kind of doesn't line up. So you sit on the board of directors for, okay, uh, the local gas company, but you have disclosed all affiliations with the gas company. Cool. That sounds fine. Um, that doesn't sound like something that would not be allowed for me to proceed with the project. Uh, you are unfamiliar with the particular intricacies required for this fuel design, but you have a licensed engineer within your firm that will oversee, stamp, and sign for the, the plans. I don't see anything wrong with this. Somebody with more knowledge than you uh, is gonna go through and get this project done pretty much. With the agreement of the, get, the local gas company, you your firm will use the information gathered from this design to upgrade facilities in other states. Nothing wrong with that. You have information. You want to make sure that you're serving um, your clients properly um, by upgrading your facilities. I don't see anything wrong with that. All right. In addition to the payment you will receive from the gas company, you will also receive payment from the uh, county uh, for the new distribution mains, uh, that will support the city. The gas company is unaware of your contract with the county. Okay. So there's some unawareness here, right? And anytime people are unclear, unaware, there are problems that you are going to see. All right. So I, I would pick D just because, people are unaware and it seems like, um, you're going to be receiving some extra payment, but I'm, I'm saying that with, you know, some prior knowledge, right? So the best way to be able to get to this answer, right? Would be to review these, uh, model rules. Okay. And as I'm scrolling through, Hopefully you all can see um, licensees obligation to employer and clients. Okay. So if I have a client that I'm working with, uh, like the county, all right, I would, I would scroll down and from kind of knowing, reading quickly, Licensees uh, shall not accept compensation, financial or otherwise, from more than one party for services pertaining to the same project unless the circumstances are fully disclosed and agreed to in writing by all interested parties. Okay, so you can't just do business with the county and uh, with the local gas company and getting all these different payments from these two different clients without them 
uh, being unaware. All the parties need to know everything. And so that's why it's important to have gone through your FE manual so that you uh, are familiar with, you know, this stuff. So that was quite a bit of content. It looks like I'm like at 10 minutes already. So I'm going to uh, definitely go through some of these other things that are listed that you're going to be axed on um, for the civil section. The next video that I'm going to cover is going to be on licensure. So again, if you found some value out of this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, I am, I do have some more problems for you. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know down in the comment section and be sure to check out the description box because I'm going to have a ton of different resources like practice tests, uh, different practice problems, links, to different practice problems, um, some other places that you get, get some other practice tests, materials that you might need. So, um, I want you all to have all the resources that you need to pass this exam. It's very important to me that you pass on the first try and not on the <laughs> third, fourth, 10th try, um, took me three times. So hopefully this was helpful and I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace.